to tie better flies faster with the Norvice fly tying system. This is the way your Norvice is going to come to you. You're going to find in this package, first is the vise itself, that's this part. There's a matching thread post that's included with your vise. Also in your package, there's a videotape, the one that we're watching right now, some pair of mounting bolts, and a nifty little Allen wrench that'll fit all of the nuts and screws and things that we have to contend with in the vise itself. Now a lot of the commercial fly tires, we're going to take their Norvice and are going to mount it like this directly on their fly tying bench or table. The bolts right here just come up through the bottom. Do that with the thread post in a similar manner. Now for most of us that are recreational tires, we're going to find probably the best way to do it is to use a piece of countertop material such as what I have here. It's a cutout from a kitchen sink. Drill a couple holes in it, bolts come up through the bottom, this allows us to take our vise, we can position it on the dining room table or wherever we're going to be tying flies, and when we're all through, we can put it away. It's a very convenient way to do it. Now let's take a look at how this Norvice really works. Probably the most important part of a fly tying vise is how it holds the hook. With the Norvice, it's quite simple. We take the hook like this, put it in the jaws, and with a little lever, clamp it in position. Now with the Norvice, it's real important because we're going to want to turn that hook. Is we want to align the hook perfectly even with the top of the jaws. You do it like so, lock it in place, and you'll see that when we spin the vise, the shank itself doesn't move. That's very important. So when you get your vise, please don't try to put the hook up like this. When you turn it, it's not going to be very well centered. And don't put it down like so in the middle, you'll find that doesn't work either. Okay, let's take a look uh, next at how we adjust for hook size. We can take a pretty good size hook. This is a very large saltwater hook, the caliber that we use for marlin fishing. I'm using the small version of the Norvice. This little screw right here allows us to open up the jaws a bit. And what you want to do is set the hook in there, turn that so it's just very lightly in contact. Position the shank of the hook, even at the top of the jaws like this, clamp it in position, we're ready to go. Okay? Next we're going to take and put a little tiny hook in there. This is a little tiny hook. It's about a size 26. We have to close the jaws down a bit. And then we're going to set this little beauty in here. Again, adjust it so it's just in light contact. Clamp it shut. Now see how the shank of the hook is even with the top of the jaws? So again, when we turn it, the shank, the part that we're going to be tying on, is perfectly centered. Now, a lot of times we're tying with curved hooks. With a curved hook, it's a little bit problematical just how well we can center it. This is the type of hook we use for a lot of our freshwater shrimp or scud patterns and it's curved. So what we're going to try to do is sort of split the difference as far as where we want the axis of rotation to be. It looks a little bit funny, but you're going to find in tying with a Norvice that you can work on these curved hooks just fine. Now as far as holding the hook goes, there's always a lot of problem just how well does it hold. Well, let's take a look. We'll put a hook in here, and this is a pretty good hook. Clamp it shut like that, the hook does not slip. That's good enough. Okay, how does the vise rotate? The vise rotates by pulling the rear hub out like this. You can turn the vise. You can use the front hub. You can use the rear hub to rotate the vise. We're going to find that probably to spin the vise, we want to twirl it using the arbor. That's this little part down here. Between your thumb and forefinger, you can roll it around like that just perfect. You lock it in position by pushing the rear hub in. You'll find that there's four locks. Every 90 degrees there's another lock. When it's locked like that, you can't turn it with a pipe wrench. Now sometimes we want to rotate the vise. To do that, we use this, this is called the friction clamp, this little knob on top. 
just screw it down a little bit. Now you pull the hub out, you can turn the vise, and wherever you leave it, it'll stay positioned. That's great for doing really detailed type stuff, like when we're putting on uh, cheeks or putting uh, uh, little eyeballs onto some of our streamer patterns. Now the way we change hubs, because sometimes we're going to want to pull this thing apart and change from one configuration to another, is also pretty simple. Norvice comes with this little Allen wrench. That's this little beauty that was in the box. Take the set screw and loosen it back here, and the front hub comes off. And we can put a different hub configuration on there for different jaws. We can also take the rear hub off, and we're going to want to do that sometimes. There's a little O-ring. You can peel this O-ring off with your fingers like so, and this rear hub slides off. Now, we've taken the vise apart about as much as you want to do. Yeah, if you want you can remove the drive disc and get the bearings out and that sort of thing. Really no need to lubricate this. It's going to last a long time just the way it is.